It's gonna take a long time to mend that mangled mess of metal. <sighs> Typical. Just great. Well, if you're stuck... Welcome back to the Type of Hangar. Welcome to day two of Biker Mike's Week here at the Type of Hangar. Today I'm going to talk to you about the two play sets in the vintage 1993 toy line. It's the Carbuncle Secret Laboratory, whatever crazy stuff he's got going on there, and the Scoreboard Hideout. Aside from being a great display stand where you can show your figures and do some elevations there, there's a lot of features to both of these play sets. I'm going to show them all coming up. So we're going to start off with the Dr. Carbuncle Secret Laboratory. And I'm going to start on this side here, but then we're going to kind of get into a few other things and play value and all that kind of stuff with this playset. Plus, there are some interesting color variations in the plastic, which I have noticed just from looking around at a few parts and pieces. It can get very confusing very fast. And I think I figured most of it out so we can explain it here. So getting into this, first of all, you do get this green guy. This is Fred the Mutant. He created this Fred the Mutant and the instructions actually show to assemble him, but mine was already assembled because I got a used one for real cheap and probably had to buy more parts. I don't know. It's been a couple years since I picked it up, so I don't remember, but let's see. Does he have a tail? So I guess I'm missing my tail on the green guy. Now the green guy by himself, if you don't have him with your playset, can get quite expensive. That's what, that's what this one does. So the one that comes with Carbuncle does this. And then the one that's with this playset doesn't have that feature, but he still has a tail. So anyhow, kind of fun. We're going to get into a little more into this tomorrow and more into this guy tomorrow. But this figure, I believe, comes with the playset and he's in the instructions, all that kind of stuff. So what does that matter? Because he does all kinds of testing and stuff on him. He can uh, do a lot, created him. So there's all of these contraptions here on the back side of this so we're starting at the back and i move to the front and so we got like a saw so we can like drill into them somewhere we have a hand attachment here and it's all plugged into these holes and the hand attachment can rotate it's multiple pieces snapped together and he can, it can come down here and like hold them in place while this other saw comes down to drill comes down to drill into him and then we have this crazy high wire hose thing that can do some stuff on this contraption. Now, these are, some of them are blue, some of them are orange, and what I've noticed is that it's kind of like with the Bionic 6 playset. Some of them, they pretty much made all of the parts in blue and all the parts in orange and just kind of scramble seating them together and you get what you get. And so some playsets have these nubs over here cast in blue and some have the, the nubs cast in orange like mine. Now, let's see if we can unplug this and plug it into here. And I believe you can also plug it. Well, I don't know if you can plug it into there or not. Probably not, that's just screws, they're hiding screws. But I think you can plug it into there too. Yeah, so I just unplug and plug in. Uh, when I got this playset, I really did think stuff was supposed to plug into this, but it doesn't. So it just seems like a missed opportunity, even though it's a screw hole to have another contraption that could have plugged into there. But with as many opportunities to plug stuff in on this, it's it's pretty interesting. I thought it also came with a camera, but if it did, I didn't get it. Now, coming up here to the top, you can open up this compartment and there's really, it's just a compartment, but I believe everyone just uses it for storage. And so uh, I'm storing some of these tools. Well, they're more like torture devices, but they're tools for the old Dr. Carbuncle to get in here. So let's see what tools he can use on his Fred. So one tool here is like an ax. That's a tool to use with Fred. Let's, I wonder what he does with Fred and his ax. Here's a giant knife or a machete looking thing with, with a little uh, can opener looking thing on there. So uh, Fred, I'm sorry, buddy. Then this looks like giant weird scissors or something. Something along those lines, some strange looking scissors. And then we have a hammer to fix Fred. So crazy stuff, crazy parts and pieces. And those come in orange also. Circling around here to the front, you do notice this whole contraption, his his laboratory in uh, the, the main evil bad guy, Lindbergh's uh, office. So, that's, I think it's Limburger. Anyhow, 
we can open up this door and then you're going to notice there's a few things going on here. There is a peg for a figure to peg into or a clip for a figure to clip into such as Fred or whatever. And so what you do is you put them in there, close the door and then flip the switch. And then you turn them around, turn this thing around. Well, let's do two things. First of all, He's not in there anymore. So this is just like Mummer's Tomb, if you're familiar with the Thundercast Mummer's Tomb, but it's only for one figure at a time. So one figure just like disappears. Well, this is sort of kind of like a dimension portal. So he is uh, ported f over to here. So he comes in from another dimension or something, and there he is. That's kind of the whole plan behind all that. And then since uh, he did kind of come out of place. I'm going to reposition him and then we're going to bring him back or send him back to another dimension and we're going to see how to do that. Now I want to show you something. With the door is open there's a mechanism right here where it will not let you move the lever. I, mean, I don't know if it's a safety feature or what, why they did that, but I actually thought mine was broken at first. Move the lever and he's back. He's back to attack. Now, the other thing is if this door's open, it won't move. But when this door closes, there's a tab at the bottom of this door and it will, see if we can get a better look at that. This tab will engage this and you'll be able to move it back and forth. See, it won't move, but then you push that button there, you can move it again. So, so it's a safety feature or something or just some sort of feature of it. A few more things to say about this playset before we move on to the score board hideout which i think is the, is the more interesting of the two sets these uh, pivot move back and forth side to side and so it can spy on you no matter these these spy kind of camera looking things or lasers or whatever that's one the other thing is you might look at this and say mike this is lame like why do you even care why'd you even buy that it was, it was like 50 bucks and it was mostly complete i might be missing a couple pieces but I, I just can't figure out what i would be missing but if you watch the show and i just watched a few episodes just seems like episode after episode another bad guy comes out to fight the biker mice and they just keep coming up with more bad guys they only made a few but if they made all the bad guys in the show that's like another dozen bad guys right so now to get down and dirty and look at this scoreboard hideout playset. now it does a few things and one thing that i found that was really frustrating with this was to make the scoreboard look like a scoreboard it doesn't want to stay closed and it would have been nice if it had some sort of like a latching mechanism that each one of these three pieces can stay closed so we're going to kind of take a look at why they do that they call this the blast through scoreboard wall where you can blast through the scoreboard wall and that's the whole reason and because of that the whole time you're over here messing with this thing and it's a pain in the butt and it doesn't really latch together and it it seems like it would but no it doesn't it is a serious pain but aside from that that's probably the worst part about this we're going to get into looking at the rest of this they call the stairs the quigley filled stadium stairs and they're nice they do a symbol in four parts two sides and then this bottom to keep it together which for the longest time I didn't know what that part went to and then I figured it out. There are some stickers on the inside, uh, which it's kind of fun. They can have some fun underneath there, but there's a hot dog stand over here. And I think the instructions call the hot dog stand the super hip hot dog stand. Okay, so looking at the features, we're gonna start at the top here where these are the scoreboard lights and the scoreboard lights turn into Martian missile launchers. And the lights themselves, they can turn around 360 and so you can have them facing whichever direction you're wanting to see on there. But this flips up and you have missile launchers. So they can launch either any direction. Obviously the mice are gonna be inside here shooting uh, Lindberger or cats, depending on uh, what episode you're watching. And as you can see, the frustration of trying to keep this thing closed, maybe maybe when we can use the lights to help keep it closed. But uh, when you have it in a display, back to the wall, it's not that big of a deal. But this is what the launchers look like, and it's more or less, I don't even see, think it's a friction based. I think you just, you have to flick it or something to, to launch it. It's not even friction based, there's no spring in it. So I don't really care that there's no spring, but that's just the way it came, that's the way it is. It is what it is. So 
Going down to the next feature, well, we do see this wall here. We got a soda machine, a TV, a refrigerator. So it's kind of their setup for their house or the place to chill. This here is their scoreboard peephole. So that's for, so it opens up so that one of them can look through here and see the score. And, uh, well, that's the weird thing. He can't quite see out of it. He's not quite tall enough, but okay, whatever. It's still a peephole. That's what that's for. You can also mount a basketball goal to any of these three holes, ports, and I was thinking you could mount these also because they look like they could or should, but it didn't quite work for me. So I, I really thought these would mount in there. Also, they come with the figure. It just seems like a... There it goes. Yeah, you can mount that also. So it has the integration. This comes with a figure and it mounts to the playset, which is excellent integration. I like that. Next up, we have a workout area, which includes a bench, and there's a little bump out notch for the tail, which is kind of cool that they did that. And then we have the weights, and you can make them look like they're pumping iron. And one interesting thing is, I didn't understand why the weight bar was shaped like this, but I guess I know why. With the lack of wrist articulation, that's what it takes to get him to hold the bar, and that's how they fix that problem, by just reshaping the bar. Next feature is this something called an ionizer. So it just kind of sits here and spins around. And on the other side, we have something very similar. And that is this. And I've got another one of these goals in the way. See if I can pop the goal out of the way just enough so we can see what's going on here. So then we have this on the other side. This is the Thunderbolt uh, launcher. Now there's a launcher that can attach to it. And I have it right here. And so you would just clip it on somewhere. I don't have it permanently clipped on. And then these kind of uh, sprockets, it will shoot. Now it's friction based, so pretty cool. Next feature, the ability to hide this gun away. And uh, you just have to pull it up, fold it around. It's, it's not the easiest thing to do in the world, but there we go. And keep out danger because there's weapons here. So we also have this net down here. So it's, a, it's not a cat napper, it's a mouse napper. It's a hammock for them to lay in. It's not very effective, but it's also supposed to catch bad guys. Removing this basketball goal, it just slides up and off. And then in here, we can see this. And you can also store some other, I think you store a sprocket on here or something along those lines. If you can see right in here, I have three sprockets stored, which it's been so long, I forgot how they stored. Yeah, that's how it stores. Kind of slides into place. There it is, and it slides into place. So that's kind of cool. You have weapon storage, and they thought of some cool stuff in here for this. And then weapons lockers, even what it says. And there's a there's a, a phone on the side. You remember back in 1993, there were still pay phones in lots of places. Now, it's hard to find a pay phone, isn't it? It seems like it is. Okay, so this is the tool storage. You open it up, and you have tools. Now, I didn't bother with plugging the wires in, so let me do that right now. There are three holes right here at the bottom where you plug these in, and that is a kind of a pain to get these to stay in place. Here's how this works. Uh, you you have a, a mouse pull in, a biker mouse pull in, and April O'Neil, I mean Charlie, she comes in here and she fixes the bike. And whatever's wrong with the bike, whatever ails the bike, she can fix it. You got, I think there's five or six tools. You got this clamping thing with an actual spring in it. That's pretty cool. You have a heat gun so that you can uh, actually bend your action figures once you've opened them up. You, that's, that's, that's like an impact drill or something along those lines. You have a oil thing or <laughs> gas. I don't know. And then she comes with a bunch of accessories. Well, she doesn't come with it. This comes with it. Comes with the wrench, a crowbar, and a little screwdriver so they can hold those. They don't want to stay in there very well. And then we also have a hook piece to kind of hold on to something. And then we have uh, this thing, which is an impact drill. So anyway, tools to fix stuff. One last feature before I wrap this up, this folds down, this workout chair folds down. Then you can push this button here and you have the classic trap door. You have a trap door in every place set. So this is my look at the Carbuncle's secret laboratory. This is also my look at the secret hideout, scoreboard hideout that 
is from Micromise, what do I think of these two playsets? I think the playsets are definitely something of a past, uh, of a time gone by that we don't see playsets for kids these days unless they're the ones for the Imagine X or like the four and under, <laughs> four and under crowd. So we don't see them with the main toy lines as much as we used to. Playsets are considered a high risk. They don't sell as well and all that kind of stuff. So with these, they're small enough, probably the low enough price point in the 90s that they moved relatively well and they packed enough features in them to be worth probably an MSRP of like $17.99 or $22.99 or something along those lines back in the day. And so with that, they're not astounding. They're not like a HasLab kind of thing but they still are pretty good. Do they compare to Castle Grayskull? Well, that depends. That depends on if you're into biker mice and this is something that you want, then it's good. It's got all of the elements with the trap doors. It's got the stairway to the second level and all of that. It's got some features just like we saw with Thundercats. Maybe they knocked off a couple of ideas. So I think this stuff is pretty cool. And to tell you the truth, I wouldn't have picked them up if I thought they were ultra super lame. I thought they were cool looking at first and now seeing all the features and just kind of the stuff that you could do with it it's still a little bit more impressive so i think that they did a good job of these play sets i think they did a really good job of the vehicles we're gonna look at the vehicles tomorrow and all of the figures and i'm going to try to touch on all the variations i don't even know how many there are there's so many i'm probably going to miss a couple but uh, we're going to look at more on day three let me know what you think about these play sets in the comments below like and subscribe to deer hanger out Don't break a nail. We just came in to get my bike fixed. Yeah, we're the good guy. Yes, you're being cheated. Do you recall those months you escaped your laboratory on Mars? The three leaders of that pathetic rebellion. <laughs> yes, most frustrating. I had barely started experimenting on them when they got away. One has rats in the attic. There's but one thing to do. Exterminate them.